How's it going YouTube? This is Skull and today is a discussion video that I've been putting off for a while but I finally decided to sit down and talk about it. Not really expecting that many people to watch this but I figure for the people who do, hopefully you can uh, hear my opinion, uh, let me throw my uh, hat in the ring in terms of the discussion that is going on about this right now, and um, please excuse me while I have my little iPad here with my notes. I would have them on my phone, but obviously I use my phone to record this, so... Um, also, I'm not wearing my glasses because they glare in the light so much, so I'm going to have to squint at my screen here, but this is, so essentially this is going to be a very casual video, but um, I felt like I had a little bit to contribute to this discussion, so I figured may as well. Hopefully some people would give it a watch, and uh, feel free to agree or disagree. Please don't throw any bashing in the comments, or even worse, don't take my uh, views here as a... Uh, a uh, invitation for you guys to go and bash limited run games. Okay, the very first thing I wanted to talk about actually was uh, the fact that I actually have a huge amount of respect for the people who run LRG. Um, that being Doug and Josh and everyone else who's a part of that company. They are good people. I have uh, been in uh, private one-on-one -on -one conversations with both of them and more at that company. They're not bad people. They are collectors just like I am. They, um, you know, they post updates to their collection all the time on Twitter. It's obvious that they intend to run limited run games with a lot of love and devotion. And you know what? The core concept of making digital media physical is not a bad thing at all. It's something that I totally can get behind. It's just that there's some things that have uh, come up that make me feel like I need to make this video. So, um, also another big thing, there are a lot of LRG copycats. There's plenty, plenty of companies now that make limited print physical copies of uh, video games for PS4, Nintendo Switch, even, you know, stuff like PS Vita. There's even companies now that are making limited print copies of games for old, dis um, extinct consoles like Game Boy and stuff like that. And that's not limited run games fault. They were the, I don't even think they were the first ones to make limited print games. It's just they're the most well known. So whenever there's a scarcity thing, people are quick to jump on them. I'm not going to be one of those people. The copycats are not their fault. Um, the prices going up on eBay are not their fault. They, they have a set business model and it's scalpers who take it and, uh, and exploit it. So, you know, for, for those kinds of negative things, I'm not going to be critical of limited run games. So just to start out this video, I need to say I have a huge respect to the people who run limited run games. I even respect the core concept of limited run games, which is to take video games that would otherwise have no physical release and give them a physical release. Okay, I have bought over a hundred games from the company by now, and I guess that's just to lead into the rest of the video, so please just keep that in mind as I continue. So the problem with limited run games is this. See these games here? These are all Nintendo Switch video games from LRG. And I'll be referring to them as LRG for the rest of the video, so just bear that in mind. Um, now, they had been printing PS, PS4 games and Vita games since, I think, 2017, but don't quote me on that. My point is, by the time, actually, I think it's 2016, my point is, by the time they started making Switch games, they had already been in the business for a while, they were already an established company. I first learned about them from a documentary on YouTube by My Life in Gaming, and uh, I, I had been buying PS4 games from them for quite some time. To give you an idea for any of you who have been keeping up with LRG for a while, I got in on it uh, about maybe two or three months before they put up Night Trap, which was one of their biggest uh, uh, profile releases on PS4. So that should give you an idea of how long I've been in this. When they announced their intentions to start making Switch games, there weren't many people who were against the idea. Um, I, I seem to recall that the very first game they ever announced was Saturday Morning RPG, which they actually had a hand in uh, creating in the first place that video game, so it made a lot of sense that they would want to uh, release that on the Switch. Their very first release was Thimbleweed Park, which is a, a very well-known, high-profile uh, indie game. And uh, anyway, so 
Um, I'm going to have some uh, some things up here on screen from their Ask Me Anything on Reddit and several tweets that were screenshotted by me. I'm doing my best to provide as much context as possible for these so they can't be taken out of context. Um, and I welcome you to, uh, you know, find these for yourself so you can read up on them if you, if you feel like I'm being unfair in any way here. So, during their Ask Me Anything before they started making Switch games, they said, um, whoever it was that was responding to that said something along the lines of they were planning on only releasing one or two Switch games a month. What a lot of us in the Switch collecting community at the time thought that meant was that they were going to be releasing two a month tops. Uh, which is, um, that's a lot, um, for, for, you know, most people. But for collectors, that seemed like just about the sweet, sweet point. Where two games a month, you know, if you, if you just plan ahead and set aside 50, 60 dollars, uh, then, then you're set. Or, you know, maybe 80 tops if they have to print games that are 40 dollars. We just didn't expect for there to be 60 dollar games on the eShop that didn't get a physical release. So, um, you know, two, two games a month. Is, is what they said that they were going to aim for. The second time they ever opened pre-orders was for two games at once. Uh, Mercenary Kings and Flint Hook, if I remember correctly, that's what that was called. But they they published, uh, they, they sold both of them at the exact same time. So it wasn't two in one month, it was two in one day, almost instantly. And they, they promised it was a, uh, a one-time thing, and... It took a while for them to be sent out anyway, because I think they're waiting for DLC, which is another good thing I love about the company. They try and get as much of the DLC on the cartridges or on the discs in PS4 case as possible, so that when you get the game, it's as complete as possible. So, like, when they sold Celeste, I think we waited close to a year, maybe more than a year, before the game was finally released physically, but when it was, all the DLC was on the cartridge, so... Not a big deal. Um, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna complain about their release date, mind you. I'm just trying to give you an idea of um, what their uh, what their business practice was at that time. Um, so they were releasing games already a little faster than they promised. In fact, within three months, they had released at one point three games in a month instead of two in a month, and their logic with that was, we're releasing one every other week, every other Friday, and uh, that one particular month, there were three Fridays in the month. Fair enough. But... But then, things started getting a little weird. They released Ukulele, which at the time I didn't think about, but in hindsight, I can't help but think, that's a little weird. Why is it weird? Well... When the game launched on the PS4 and the Xbox One, it got a retail release. I went to Best Buy and picked up the Xbox One version the day it came out. So why is it that it could get a retail release on those systems, but not on the Switch? The Switch is, uh, I mean, the, the system is sold better than the Xbox One. Uh, ukulele on the Switch was something that a lot of people were happy to get, even if they already owned another version, because Ukulele was originally supposed to be a Nintendo Wii U game, and getting it on the Switch was as close as we could get. And for a lot of people, getting this game on the Switch was uh, uh, something of a dream come true. So why did it need a limited print release on the Switch? Well, I don't remember if they made this excuse, but I think at the time I just realized, you know what, Switch cartridges cost way more than Blu-rays, and that's what PS4 and Xbox One use, are Blu-rays. Those cost pennies to make, whereas the Switch cartridge, it costs $20, $30, depending. So maybe LRG just needed to step in to help handle some of the Switch cartridge costs, and in exchange sell it exclusively on their website so they wouldn't have to worry about retailers taking their cut, you know. Maybe it makes sense just to make sure that this game, which otherwise couldn't have been released in any way, did get released. Again, fair enough. And it did get a uh, retail release at Best Buy stores later. They do release a lot of their games at Best Buy, but we'll get to that in a second. A uh, while passes, and then they announce their highest profile release yet. Giga Wrecker Alt. Why is this so high profile? It's a Game Freak game. Game Freak is the company that makes Pokemon. You, you might know, you know, Nintendo 
is the one that publishes the game. It's always on Nintendo system, but Game Freak are the actual creators and producers of Pokemon games. That is the company that codes and programs and tests and all that stuff for Pokemon. So why did Game Freak need a limited print release of their game? And well, uh, LRG's excuses is not limited print. It's an open pre-order. In fact, they opened up this pre-order for a full month instead of just two weeks. So if it takes you a while to um, get the money necessary to get this, this game, then you got more time now to do it. Okay. So, um, so then at some point... We, uh, we start getting these kinds of games from them. This is called Oceanhorn, and this isn't a numbered release. There's nowhere on the box that even says that it is published by Limited Run Games. The only way you'd know is by looking at the cartridge on the inside, I think. No, not even there. You'd never know this is from... Okay, there, there it is on the back. <laughs> Limited Run Games. This is what they call a distributed game. It's not a numbered release. What LRG does is they make sure that their store is the only way for you to buy the game and it still has the exact same open pre-order scheme as everything else. What's the difference? If, if the rest of these games are all numbered, then why shouldn't this be? I'll tell you why. It's so that they can release more than two or three in a month. There was one month last year, and I forget which month it is, I apologize, where they had six Switch games released. Because there were some like, uh, I think Turok and Turok 2, no, that doesn't sound right, but like, they had two games in one package that they were selling one week, they had two regular games every other week in the month, and then they had two distributed games on top of all that. They had six Switch games in one month, and that doesn't even count the PS4 games and I think a Vita game thrown in there, and now they've started doing other things, like they sold a Sega CD game, and they're selling... Uh, collector's editions for computer games would that don't even come with the disc there's literally no physical print of the game to be included so I mean it was one thing when you had Shantae in there and they just became the uh, the uh, exclusive distributor of Shantae games because Half Genie Hero just cost too much to make and sell so they had to go with LRG that's one thing making distributed games and games that are way too large to be limited print, that is where I'm drawing the line, and that is where I'm calling my problem with limited run games. I'll tell you what made me finally break down and make this video. There was a game on the Sega Saturn that is one of the best games on the Sega Saturn called Panzer Dragoon. It's an on-rail shooter similar to Star Fox, but it uses dragons and it's beautiful, and why am I bringing this up? Because it was announced like a year ago, in, I'd like to say, Nintendo's E3 Direct, that Panzer Dragoon was getting a full-on remake for the Nintendo Switch. Just taking the old game, rebuilding it from scratch, making it a release so that uh, people could experience it who hadn't before. It had gone up for pre-order at several retailers all across the world before those pre-orders were suddenly shut down and everyone refunded. LRG announced about a month ago that they were the only release for Prancer Dragoon Remake. Out of all of these games, I can still justify all of them in some way needing a limited print release for money reasons, for just making sure that it gets a release at all, for, you know, hardships, you know. I can justify each of these in some way. Panzer Dragoon, which is a high-profile Sega Saturn game that people could look on the store shelf and not even know what it is, but see there's a dragon on the cover and think, oh, that looks like a pretty cool game, and Impulse buy it? Nope. Must be a limited print release. And that is where I'm beginning to realize I think LRG is pursuing developers and publishers intentionally to keep them from doing retail releases of their games and go straight through LRG. Now, I don't have much evidence to back that up. I do have this tweet from Josh that when I tweeted out at him asking, you know, uh, I could have worded this tweet better, but essentially I was trying to ask, how big and how well known does a game have to be before you don't publish it. Uh, you can see my exact wording on the screen. But essentially his reply is when it's so mainstream, and his example was Call of Duty. So, 
what I'm getting from that is, if the game is expected to get a physical release anyway, only then will they not pursue a limited print of it? Not to mention, when E3 was cancelled this year, he was one of the only people that I saw, and again, nothing against Josh here, or, or, you know, what he does for a living. But he was saying on Twitter how E3 is an opportunity for him to get the one-on-one -on -one contact with developers, which essentially tells me that he was planning on going to E3 this year to uh, try and get more of these deals made. I'm wondering, and I really do believe now, that LRG is pursuing game developers and asking for them to not retail publish games in exchange for selling them through LRG themselves. Literally taking the uh, the retail release and throwing it out the window so that they can get a higher profile release for their own name brand. I think that's what's going on. And that is the problem with LRG now. They, um, uh, Josh has pretty much said that they have to rely on high profile releases now because no one's trying to collect all of their games. Well, maybe if they stopped frequently putting out, you know, too many games in a month for us to keep up with, then wouldn't be an issue. Just saying. Um, oh, but we can't do that. You can see here on screen this whole thread, um, that he posted due to the coronavirus. And this is so, this is such a touchy subject for me. I'm not against him having to fire employees because of this. I, I really do respect him for keeping them here and, and uh, you know, keeping them, keeping their job secure during this tough time. But when a global pandemic is going and people all over are begging for LRG to stop their frequency and they say, no, we can't do that because we wouldn't be making enough money otherwise. I'm sorry, but that pretty much spells out what their motive is to me. The only other thing I wanted to bring back up is uh, when I said earlier about Best Buy. Um, the thing is, a few of these games have seen Best Buy releases. Um, namely, Ukulele. In fact, uh, no, no, that's not the Best Buy cover, but I do also have the Best Buy cover. Um, the they Limited Run Games has released a lot of Switch games at Best Buy. And in the beginning, they were doing a really good job of letting you know, hey, this will be getting a Best Buy release later. Um, but now, not so much. Now, it really is like, I'd say a 50-50 chance that it'll get a Best Buy release. And they usually don't let you know ahead of time until maybe a day or two before pre-orders close. Oh yeah, we also are in talks with Best Buy. This might get a release. They, they made it clear, Best Buy has the right to not release it if they so choose. But, usually, a game is up for pre-order for, like, a month, and most of the pre-orders are in before they finally say at the very end, Oh, by the way, you can get it Best Buy for a lot cheaper than through us. Just going to throw that out there. Anyway, that's going to wrap up this video. I, uh, I'm sorry that this went for so long, but I hope that all my points were understood. And, again, if you disagree with anything I, I have to say, um, um, well, just please don't bash in the comments, and, and again, please don't go and bash LRG on my behalf. Um, this is just something that I've had on my chest for a while, so I finally get off my chest. Hope you all, um, hope you all enjoyed the video, and, uh, yeah, the, uh, future of, um, of game collecting is not looking very fun, but, but oh well, what can you do, right? Thanks, everyone, for watching.